Hey, okay. folks, before we go, I just want to say I, I appreciate your, con your, your confidence in me. Thanks so much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Lynch, for signing up. Um, all those in favor? Baby and I. Day I. Uh, La camera I. Okay. Thanks, right, everybody. Thank, thank you. Later. Good night. Good night, Rich. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Hey, Mark. Yes. Mr. Lynch, you, you muted yourself again. Okay, Mark, you, tell, me, tell me what you need me to do and I'll do it. We will, we will. Okay. We're gonna conduct the rest of our meeting now though. We have to get back into our regular planning board meeting. Okay, whenever okay. you're ready, you tell me what you want. I'll be glad to do it. All right, just sit tight and observe at this point and please be muted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so at this point, let's see. I'm going to reopen the public hearing that's been continued on Bella Way, 39 Cross Street and part of 5 Harding Street. We had an application of a definitive plan for a residential subdivision, uh, which we met at, I think, our July 9th meeting and discussed, and it's been continued twice now in tonight's meeting. Um, I'm going to just pull up a little bit of paperwork that I have prepared for that. Uh, so at the previous meeting, uh, I allowed excessive discussion. This veered a little bit from standard meeting decorum, but it allowed the butters to speak to their, speak their mind. However, tonight's meeting, I will not uh, be conducted in that fashion. I will keep control of the floor and give individuals a turn to speak. But if an individual speaks out of order, they will be warned. And if they continue to speak out of order, they'll be removed from the meeting. Um, so I want all of the abutters uh, of this cross street project, uh, which it looks like we have Mr. Morrissey present um, and Mr. Bissonette from Zenith Consulting Engineers present. Is there anyone else here on the hearing for Bella's Way or Bella Way? Um, Attorney Michael O'Shaughnessy is with me as well. Okay. Um, so I just want to read into the record. The purpose of the subdivision control law is a comprehensive statutory process designed for the safety, convenience, and welfare of the inhabitants of cities and towns. When a definitive subdivision is received by a planning board, they must schedule a public hearing. The planning board must act within 45 days to either approve, modify, and approve or deny that subdivision plan. The planning board must approve a plan if it complies with the board's rules and regulations and the recommend recommendations of the Board of Health. Uh, if the planning board fails to take action, uh, the plan will automatically be constructively approved without any changes as drafted. So I just want to read in, I have a, letter from the Board of Health that we have had. I just wanna make sure that it's read into the record. Uh, Dear Chairman Knox, we have received copies of the definitive plan for a residential subdivision of Cross Street, known as Bella Way, the Zenith Consulting Engineers plans dated May 11th, 2020 show three new residential dwellings with on-site sewage disposal systems. We feel there is sufficient land and suitable soils to allow for three new subsurface sewage disposal systems under the Title V and Lakeville wastewater design parameters. And also have sufficient area for three new proposed wells. There is also a local Board of Health regulation for a slab above high groundwater and all of the proposed dwellings meet the criteria. Therefore, based on the information provided, to the Board of Health, there is no reason for the Board of Health to recommend denial due to public health issues at this time. Any questions, please contact uh, Edward Cullen, our Board of Health agent. So I just want everybody to understand that is here and present for the Bellaway hearing. Um, 
We had a letter from the fire department also uh, that they initially had some concerns and he restated a letter, his most recent letter. Uh, this letter has been written to provide an update for the Lakeville, from the Lakeville Fire Department review of the proposed Bellaway project. As previously stated, the fire department has no issue with the width of the proposed roadway as it exceeds 20 foot requirements. In previous correspondence to the planning board, the fire department required the inclusion of a cul-de-sac or an alternative turning device at the termination of laneways. Following a meeting with Zenith Consulting Engineers, LLC, it has agreed that the hammerheads will serve as the turnaround device. The hammerheads will be constructed with dimensions to accommodate Lakeville's ladder truck. As previously stated, the road surface will be constructed to accommodate the weight of fire department apparatus. Any questions, please contact Chief Michael Bryant. Uh, there were about our concerns at the last meeting of a loss of privacy with clear cutting of trees that would expose Route 44, uh, traffic safety, and personal loss of privacy. So to condition those items, we had requested with the developer a, a planted no cut buffer zone behind 35 and 37 Cross Street uh, and the cleared area that is currently cleared would be replanted as part of this no cut zone. Uh, as far as the clear cutting of trees beyond the houses to Route 44, those trees are actually protected by a conservation uh, condition. So there would not be any cutting that was an original concern of the abutters. In addition to the traffic safety concerns, I reached out to the chief of police and highway superintendent uh, and received the following response. So my request to Chief Perkins and Franklin Moniz of the highway department was that the Lakeville Planning Board has a definitive subdivision plan at 39 Cross Street on its upcoming agenda. Residents on that street have concerns about truck traffic during construction uh, of the new road. I am reaching out to see if there would be, if you would permit or allow the planning board to condition this project with the following signage or a variation of to be put up on Cross Street during roadway construction. Uh, signage might say trucks entering or construction zone slow. And if signage is allowed, any assistance or recommendations <clears throat> on the exact wording and location of signs would be appreciated. Uh, I included the highway department so that they would be included in that matter. The chief's response, <coughs> excuse me, that's uh, Chief Perkins of the police department. I talked to the DPW director Moniz and we both agree if we were to allow or approve signage, it may put some liability on us and start type some type of precedent. We do offer the following assist, uh, the following to assist you in your decision process. In the interest of public safety, having signage warning traffic of hazards is helpful. However, the term construction zone is confusing as it carries additional speeding and enforcement penalties construction and construction area or construction ahead may be more appropriate. There may also be an issue with the location of signage. Will it be on private property or create some type of sightline obstruction? <clears throat> if the construction creates a hazard, they may need to hire a police detail. An agreement between the town of Lakeville uh, police collective bargaining agreement. Uh, road detail would consist of a road opening, road construction, which would consist of cross street, or any situation that results in a re redirection, detouring, stopping or starting of any traffic. Any situation which jeopardizes the safety of the public 
would require a detail officer. At no time will any company truck, uh, any company work in the town of Lakeville upon a public way or interfere with the normal flow of traffic uh, to a public way without the assistance of a police officer, nor shall any company impede normal lines of sight at an intersection, hills, or cross uh, road crossings. Um, then he actually acknowledged that we did have an issue on Cross Street when the subdivision at the old driving range, uh, which was a lot of the vet residents' concerns of Cross Street, residents of Cross Street complained of speeding construction trucks and construction workers in private vehicles. We addressed the issue by running radar and writing citations. The common offenses were speeding and trucks with uncovered loads. That's it. At this time, I'd like to open the floor to Jamie from Zenith Consulting Engineers. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Jamie Bissonette from Zenith Consulting Engineers for the record. Um, if I may, I'd like to share the screen and we can go over the, um, the modifications on the plan since our last presentation. Please do. Thank you. All right. So this is the updated uh, revised definitive sheet. Um, I believe that it, since the last meeting, some of the things that we had um, that we had taken out of the board meeting, but also from uh, Mr. Nick Laney's comments from HML Associates uh, on this plan, mostly dealt with easements. Um, as you can see, easement A here um, is, is for a drainage area. Um, easement B over in here, same thing, drainage. Easement C, drainage. And then we have an easement B here, which is a buffer, buffer zone in which I believe um, the chairman spoke about plantings uh, to buffer um, the, the lots on Cross Street. Um, on this area, on on easement C, we have our drainage basin, but we're proposing a fence um, you know, on the berm side of the basin, um, you know, for screenage on this section in here. Um, if I can go to the next sheet, um, a couple of the items that were uh, brought up by Mr. Laney that we evaluated. Um, one was the outlet structure um, prior to, um, prior with our, with our original submittal, we had a four inch pipe that was leaving the basin. Um, his concern was that the pipe could clog because of the small diameter. Um, so what we did was we um, up, up sized the pipe to a 12 inch pipe and put a control outlet structure with a four inch orifice and an overflow catch basin top on that structure. So if the four inch orifice on the box does clog, um, the water can overflow onto the top of the box structure and flow in the catch basin grate to, um, to alleviate that clog. Um, Another point that uh, Mr. Laney had brought up was asking us if we had done a culvert analysis on the pipes going underneath the driveways. Uh, the answer was no, we had not, but we did. Um, and we found that we actually had to add one pipe and increase the size on this uh, section in here, and that these pipes actually were, uh, were meeting the, uh, the needs, so they were able to stay as is. Um, and the reason being is, um, when you do culvert analysis flow on these pipes, we weren't getting enough head um, building up to push the water through. Uh, it was a flatter area in here, so we had to increase the uh, surface area. And uh, there was a question about drainage in the front here, making sure that it was all, uh, all caught in the system or accounted for in the drainage or not going into the drainage. Um, and we have, we have uh, addressed that with him. And, um, and he has written us a uh, clean bill of health letter. Um, I believe for Mr. Laney's concerns that addresses, uh, that addresses them. And uh, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you have. Um, uh, just, I know I did a lot of talking and reading initially, but that was the one thing I overlooked was the HML Associates letter from Nick Laney. I'd just like to read that into the record as well. Um, and this is, I think, his most updated is July 28th from HML Associates, the review of drainage report for Bella Way off Cross Street. We have reviewed the revised stormwater management report dated July 7th, 2020, 
and the accompanying revised subdivision plan dated July 27, 2020 for Bella Way, prepared by Zenith Consulting Engineers. The comments contained in our June 22nd, 2020 review have been addressed to our satisfaction. It is our understand, uh, our undersigning that I think that should say understanding. Yeah, it, it is our understanding that the applicant is working with the planning board for a long-term maintenance plan. Um, is that, I had a motion, a motion prepared and I know uh, attorney O'Shaughnessy did a finding as well. Uh, and I haven't, matched the two of them up that well, but uh, that that stormwater maintenance plan be reviewed by Nick Laney as well? Um, well, I, we spoke with Nick about the maintenance plan. His concern was um, if the owners of the development don't maintain the basin, um, then it could, it could cease to work. Uh, just like anything, you know, in life, if, if it's not properly maintained, uh, there can be issues. Um, and so I believe Attorney O'Shaughnessy's uh, package that he had submitted for the uh, common roadway maintenance agreement um, gave, gave uh, explicit powers if the, um, if the owners of the property in charge do not maintain this and it becomes an issue, the town has the right to access the property clean or do the maintenance and charge or fine charge the the uh, people that were responsible for that so i think that was i actually uh, do remember reading that yeah yeah that that was nick's main concern was that in most basins if it becomes a problem the town can go do something about it in this case if the town has to they can they can do it and then they can they can seek our uh, you know repayment for expenses um if need be Is the town able to do that? Is the town able to keep a monitor that, make sure they uh, do what they do? Please stay muted. Um, Mark, I have a question for Jamie about that. Go ahead. Yes, um, Jamie, what, what's preventing somebody, if, if you say the town will go in and um, do it, um, and, and then we would just charge them what it costs, then if, if these homeowners said, well, okay, just charge me what it costs. That's, that's, to me, that's not a, uh, that's not a plan. Do you know what I mean? Um, there has to be like a, a 150%, uh, you know, or a 200% charge. Do you know what I mean? Because then they just say like, oh, well, I'll just have them do it. You know, um, that's easy. When they come and they see it's a mess, they'll fix it and they'll send me a bill. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I and and again, I don't know what the rates the town charges, but I do know if the town had to hire a subcontractor to go out there, prevailing wage um, rates apply. From my sure. understanding, unless it's a sole proprietor, um, I think you're going to find that those rates would be astronomical compared to a small, a smaller firm that would typically do this. Um, gotcha. these, the operation and maintenance out here is very minimal. Um, it's it's your standard type of basin. Nick's main concern was uh, was overgrowth in the four bay, um, you know, that and we have uh, we have a, a catch basin that will need to be clamshelled every once in a while, um, you know, every few few years most likely. I, I don't see any major um, major potential failures as far as um, anything that's high maintenance, but vegetation will be need to be up kept in the basins. Um, and they will have to make sure that the catch basins have the sediment removed from time to time. So in, in his, uh, in his maintenance uh, recommendations, he, mm -hmm. he didn't prioritize the trench drain very high at all. Uh, uh, no, he, he didn't, he didn't make it any more of a priority over anything else. His, in fact, the concern he expressed to me verbally was the growth in the four bay. Okay. Um, you know, and, and uh, that, that seemed to be his number one area of concern, but I don't think Nick's a good engineer. I don't think that he, he, um, that he wasn't thinking, he was thinking about all the aspects of it, I believe, Peter. Yep. Okay. 
Hi, this is Barbara. I have a question for Attorney O'Shaughnessy. Um, if we, this maintenance plan um, was to be implemented, can that be utilized as a deed restriction? And can we require that the contractor who does the work be a licensed uh, to, to perform that type of work? Because one of the concerns that I have is if homeowners were to try to do the work themselves, they might try to use, a, like, you know, I think of someone putting like a weed killer product just to deal with maybe vegetation, not recognizing that we have a protected area very proximate to the property. Um, well, yes. Yeah, so, so the, the the intent of the the restrictions is to um, create the ability for the the property owners to go in and do their own maintenance and take care of the roadway, so the town doesn't have to. And, and, and we added a provision in there giving the town the ability, not the obligation to go in, but the ability to go in if, if, if there was a real big safety concern. That, so something really needed to be addressed sooner than later so they could go in and cure it. And, and we added in almost like a, a back charge feature, if you will. Um, but we, we could add some stuff um, into the document that says um, um, that restricts the use of uh, uh, like a roundup type of product. So you, you can't kill the kill the weeds that way. You have to do it some other way. That that we, we can do that. That shouldn't be an issue. Um, well, the, there are some chemicals that are allowed to be used in resource areas as well. Uh, in conservation, we let people spray all the time in Long Pond, and it gets monitored and goes right into our swamps. Um, that in fact, the neighborhood of Parkhurst has a ongoing condition. Uh, that they can spray annually or put pellets down to kill weeds in the in the pond. Um, jo Jamie, would you mind zo zooming in on the notes on the plan, so we can? Sure. Yeah. Get a so, those. if I may, just so we have um, we have a section here for operation and maintenance. This this might be this might be the best way to go when looking at this. Um, so this, this is typically what we propose um, to a scale like this for stormwater management for bigger plans, but this is how we view um, type of repairs or, um, well, operation and maintenance for a long-term uh, functioning drainage facility. So as you can see, uh, we go through, we talk about the responsible parties that does transfer with ownership. Um, but in this case, we're talking about routine maintenance is the debris and litter removed from all paved areas, catch basins, detention basins, outfalls, surrounding areas twice per year. Reseeding if there's uh, any type of erosion or slumping and regrading if need be. Um, and then mowing uh, detention basins, side slopes uh, twice a year. You don't want to cut it too short because you don't want it to die, but you also don't want it to grow up into, into a hay field either. Um, and then it talks about the periodic maintenance of cleaning the, uh, the sumps in the, in the catch basins a minimum of once a year or in, in, in inspected monthly during construction. But after the construction part is over, monthly uh, yearly cleaning should be more than adequate for a paved road um, in this situation. Um, and then non-routine maintenance, they want you to just make sure that, you know, over time that pipes, drainage basins, um, you know, and, and the likes are, you know, are inspected. And if there are any signs of deterioration, cracks, structural, uh, fl flaws that they be addressed as needed. Um, in this part right here, the stormwater management system shall be inspected after two years of full operation by an engineer. Uh, that's something you can put into the decision to make sure that that is, that that is done and look for your report uh, in two years after construction. Um, and then you'd receive a letter from some, an office like mine or another one that, that is retained to do such. Um, and then what we do is we, we give an estimate on what we think yearly will be to, to do the operation and maintenance out here. And we estimated somewhere in the ballpark of $300 on, on an average year to, you know, to mow the grass twice and to clean, uh, clean the sediment because we don't believe the catch basin is going to fill up and warrant cleaning every year. Um, I know most of the, the basins, um, they, they can go several years without being cleaned, but they should be looked at at a minimum. So the only thing that I, um, I don't like about the stormwater management notes there is the responsible party. Mm -hmm. I get it. currently the owner yes. uh, is the applicant. Yes. Uh, but 
could that be written in there that it would be transferable to to be the responsibility of lots one, two, and three? Because sure. I know Bob currently owns the, the the road and he's going to maintain it until it's all sold and inspected yep. by the town. But that that's I think the goal of this is to make sure that the the residents aren't calling Bob. Sure, I I mean we. I think we'd even be amenable to attach a document similar to this what, to go along yeah, with the yeah. with the restriction yeah. that gets recorded. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just going to suggest. I mean, we we could add this to the um, the proposed um, declaration of restrictions and, and work it in somehow. That way, you have the operations and maintenance plan, you know, recorded at the registry of deeds. So um, it'd be very easy to go back and, and say, oh, here it is, right here. It's it's on the plan. It's in the document. You know, this is what we have to do and go forward yeah ultimately that's what we're looking for but we, we want it to be clear i get it currently right now robert pellucci owns the land mm -hmm. but the goal is that because it's a private way and he's yep. probably going to sell some if not all of that that we, we want it to be clear on the plan that it's the responsibility of the property owners sure um what we can do if if it would appease uh appease the board is we can write down over in here, um, responsible party, um, Robert Perlucci, or um, or future owners. Yeah, heirs, or, heirs, successors, and assigns, or something to that effect. Yeah, we can definitely add add a note to this. That that's that. I would like that. That sounds okay. fine. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. And I actually I have a question on um, number thirty, the item number thirty. Was there supposed to be a number of years? listed there or is it just indeterminate uh, not on this but on the contract oh um that might be uh no this, this runs with the property the restrictions run with the property for uh 30 years and after after 30 years, um, the restrictions would have to be extended by the property owners. Does it say 30 years now in there? Uh, it, it doesn't, but that's what the statute is. We can add it in if you like. Now, is it something that's typically understood or or should it be? Uh, I, I, either way, I, I can add it in if just just for clarity's sake and, and make reference to the particular statute. That's fine. That's not a problem. Attorney O'Shaughnessy, you uh, this is Barbara again. You had indicated that um, by statute, the limit is 30 years. Um, there's, so there's no way to automatically renew this obligation, even if we're trying to write it in to make sure we pre protect that. That's the correct. integrity of these. That's okay. correct. The property owners would have to do so. But they could always look back at the registry and this would be there. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yep. Okay. Does any any other board members have any questions or concerns? Mark, I did have one more question. Are the all of the conditions or the conditions that we're going to talk about, are they going to be printed onto the plan? Um, well, I believe he has quite a few of them on the plan currently. Okay. I know whatever you're going to propose, I know we're going to go through that probably. Yeah. I but... just remember Zink saying how important it was to get everything on onto the physical plan for conditions and um, I ran into a situation professionally where they weren't and it's posing a problem. So I'm just curious how that's normally done. Okay, so uh, Jamie, I'm gonna read what my, uh, my list of conditions was uh, the operations and maintenance plan to be included on a plan of record, which you have. Okay. Uh, an association of all lot 
and landowners on Bella's Way to be formed by the developer that clearly makes the operation and maintenance of the stormwater recovery system and road maintenance the responsibility of the residents of the subdivision. Okay. We have that. Would you say that's accurate or? Yes, I, I believe that to be very accurate. That's uh, the piece Michael prepared. Uh, I, I spoke to you about a week ago that the town, the board would like to hold one lot building permit uh, as a surety until the binder coat of the pavement is in place. And at that time, uh, the uh, bond be posted, uh, which is going to be around $11,000 based on the length of road and what the board collects. Uh, and that bond will be held until completion of the roadway and written certification of construction compliance, which meaning top coat and a final inspection, uh, which, you know, we want to make sure it's certified. So the bond would be released when all road and stormwater drainage construction have been completed and inspected by HML associates at the cost of the developer said certification will be stated in a letter stamped by that engineer. Uh, number five construction work hours would be limited to 7am to 5pm Monday through Friday and 8am on Saturday until 4pm. No work on Sundays or holidays. Uh, all three lots would be restricted to residential zoning use, which I think attorney O'Shaughnessy included that. Um, we've got the no cut zone, uh, which is shown on the plan between, between or behind 35 and 37 and your proposed offense uh, at the uh, retention pond mm -hmm. and the cleared area would be replanted. That's what I have for the conditions that I'd like. I think you've covered most of those either on the plan or in the, uh, the finding that was drafted. That's correct. I think um, for clarity, um, we can, if it would, um, I'm gonna share the plan again, but I think the best way to maybe handle some of these, one of these concerns, um, I'm gonna go up a few sheets. So this is the sheet that gets recorded and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. This is the definitive plan that gets recorded. It has notes, um, the areas, has the waivers requested on, on construction and everything else. What we can do is I believe um, we can put in here um, a reference to the operation and maintenance, reference a book and page in which it was recorded, put a line on this definitive sheet and that way it says operation and maintenance plan C, uh, C book and page at the registry of deeds recorded, just like we do if there's a covenant that's issued, um, you know, on it as well. Or we could make it part of the performance covenant on this, where we also reference the, um, the surety and the operation and maintenance in it. We could do that as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the best way to do it is make it part of the covenant that we bring in um, when we come to get the mylar signed, if we get through the appeals period, um, and we have all of that as part of the covenant, which is a fancy word for contract with the planning board that states everything that we're going to do, and it will be referenced on this uh, definitive plan in perpetuity. I'm satisfied with that. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, um I, I just want to make sure that, that I understand. So, so you're, in your approval, if this is approved, you're going to have in your decision a requirement that the owners of lots one, two, and three are forever responsible for the maintenance and repair of Bella Way and the associated drainage systems. And, and the reason I say that is um, that to me, that's a, a belt and suspenders approach, where if, if that's part of your decision and I'm, I'm adding to it, supplementing it with my restrictions, if it ever became a, an issue in the future, the town could always point back to its decision and say, hey, we always intended for. That's what we want. Belt yeah. and right. to make sure that this road would never be adopted by the town. The town's not going to maintain it. You guys gain the frontage to put three lots in, but it's not going to be a burden on the town. Yep. And there's going to be no misunderstanding that those residents, and it should be as clear to them when they purchase the house that they are responsible or that property, that they are responsible for that. 
Understood. And it's, yeah. Um, so if you don't mind unsharing your screen for a minute, Jamie, yes, sir. I kind of want to go through and see if we have any public comment. I recognize one person, um, Mr. Morrissey from Cross Street. Hey, um, <clears throat> Mark, thanks for uh, sharing the updates. Um, Jamie, you and I had talked previously. Um, the only concern I have is my leaching field. Mm -hmm. um, I know you uh, reviewed the plans previously. There was a variance apparently because of space and there's only a one foot buffer apparently. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's really my only concern um, sure. because I have limited space to, if it fails, um, you know, I'm not an engineer, but I, I think I've got a limited space to put a leaching field in if, in fact, it fails. Um, I'm assuming you, you saw that? Oh, you, you, we're aware of where your septic system is. Um, the, the thing, uh, Mr. Morrissey, that, that when we're looking at this is we're not doing any work on your property, and nor would you be able to put your septic on their land. So. Right. Even if you were right on the property line, um, that would be as far as the board could grant you a variance to go unless you had permission from the owner to go off of your property and a variance from the Board of Health. So I, I think if you needed to replace your field in kind or find additional room on your site, I don't think this road has any impact on you doing that. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm you know, I, I like this <clears throat> subdivision better than a some of the other options, um, certainly not opposed to it. And as long as you've taken that into consideration, um, it is what it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for your comment, Mr. Morrissey. Um, no I'm looking and I don't see anyone else, but is anyone else here from cross street that would like to speak to this? That's a, uh, and a butter. I have no other comments. Um, so how do we want to do this? It sounds like you might have to make a few modifications to the plan mm -hmm. um, just to add a few things or uh, where are we with that? I'm going to call it a finding that Mr. O'Shaughnessy put together as well. Would there be sure. any amendments to that based on tonight's discussion? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure what finding you're referring to. Oh, it's the covenants. I'm sorry. It's there's the restrictions, easements, and covenants declaration. Yeah. So, so it, would, would we be making any changes to that? Well, I, I think you'd, you'd we'd refer to it as the form of the covenant attached here too. Um, and and if you wanted to, to, to as a requirement to to submit a final final form for the board's review and approval, yeah, that that'd be fine with me. I have no issue with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, and, and I, I, I guess there's a question for Attorney O'Shaughnessy and, and the board. Um, I believe that an approval letter can still be sent to the town clerk so that the appeal period starts ticking. And in the interim, we can prepare the mylars updated, get them to the board for review, and, um, and also send over the updated covenant as long as that's made as part of the motion that we do such. Am I, am I correct with that, Mike? Oh, yeah, I, I don't see any issue why you, that couldn't be done. So I, I don't think the, change, the changes that we're looking for are major. Um, I think that it's just uh, some tweaking of the covenant and, and um, yeah, tweaking of the covenant by adding the operation and maintenance into the covenant and going, um, adding the terms uh, future owner um, to the operation and maintenance on the plan. Um, and we would actually, uh, we'd appreciate it if we could get a copy of the list of conditions as well so we can make sure. I have them written down, but I didn't get the times for the limited work. Um, that should probably be in the covenant as well, since that's going to be part of the agreement. 
All right. Uh, let's see what I can do. Can you confirm that you received that? And I'll send it to the rest of the board and Kathy as well. The only thing that's not on there would be the the note to send a letter of approval uh, to the town clerk. Yes, we, we did receive it and I'll make sure that attorney O'Shaughnessy gets it as well so he can work it into the covenant. Okay. And then um, do you think the beginning of next week we can get a revised covenant? To the board for review for this yes oh yeah absolutely yeah so we'll get a revised covenant to the board the beginning of next week um so you have plenty of time to review prior to um the mylars being ready um you know to be signed from the clerk and you'll send those electronically so because we yes. don't have an office to go to yep we'll we'll send them to kathy and um and she can forward them to everybody if that's okay yeah yeah that would be awesome um so Kathy, um, I don't know if you heard that, but they're asking also is if we made a motion tonight to approve the subdivision, that uh, a letter be sent with maybe the, the include the motion in its approval to send to Lillian. Yep. It would start the appeal process that would note that it's been approved. So I just wanna have a, a, a letter drafted with your letterhead recognizing that and I'll, I'll send the board the entire motion. Um, so at this point, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and recommend approval of Bella's Way 39 Cross Street with the following conditions. Number one is an operations and maintenance plan be included on the plan of record. Number two, an association of lots and landowners on Bella's Way be formed by the developer. It clearly makes the operation and maintenance of the stormwater recovery system and road maintenance, the responsibility of the residents of the subdivision. Three, one lots building permit be held as a surety until the binder coat of the pavement is in place. At that time, a bond would be posted for $11,000 and held until completion of the roadway and written certification of construction compliance. Uh, to follow up on that, number four, the bond will be released when all road and stormwater drainage construction have been completed and inspected by HML associates at the cost of the developer. Said certification will be stated in a letter stamped by the engineer to the planning board. Uh, five construction work hours will be limited to 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturdays and no work on Sundays or holidays. All three lots are restricted to residential zoning use only. Um, well, residential zoning. Uh, seven, a no cut zone be shown on the plan of record uh, at the rear property lines of 35 and 37 Cross Street uh, and the cleared area behind 35 Cross Street be replanted within the no cut zone uh, with native evergreen trees by the applicant. Uh, and finally, a letter of this approval be sent to the town clerk as soon as possible to start the appeal period. Can I get a second? I'll second that, Mark. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, roll call. Uh, Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Myself, aye. Motion carries unanimously. And that's that. So, Jamie, you'll get us that information over the next week or so, and you're off and running? Yes, sir. Yep. All right. Very good. Have a good night. Thank you. You too, Mr. O'Shaughnessy. Uh, so, next on our agenda 
is an A and R plan at 73 Holland Mode, Holland Road, uh, which is with Jamie from Zenith. All right. Good evening, Jamie Bissonette from Zenith Consulting Engineers. For the record, um, tonight the A and R plan is uh, before you was um, something that was discussed when uh, one of my my. Uh, co-workers, uh, Niall Zager, had presented a uh, subdivision off of Howland Road called Pauline's Path. Um, this is the ANR for the lot with the existing house on it. Um, if the chair allows, I'd like to pull that up on the screen. Go right ahead. Thank you. All right, so um, in front of you is the uh, ANR plan that's been submitted. Um, and essentially what we're doing here is this is the exact same lot that was shown on the definitive subdivision as entitled a and r lot um, the remaining land is the subdivision that was uh, that was done as pauline's path um, as you can see the curve here was the entrance in on the right of way coming up this way um, and we're looking tonight for endorsement from the planning board that uh, that this uh, meets the requirements of a form a plan so can I speak to that, Mr. Bissonnette? No, oh, please. So board members, I'm sure you remember the Pauline's Path subdivision. And I think this is just a formality thing. Uh, the way that it was presented, I had asked that it be separately listed as a form A just because of the unknown factor of, I think the there was a right of first refusal on the town and we wanted to make sure that this was a separate A&R off of that plan in case the land got sold to the state rather than the developer. Um, so I've reviewed and I think that, that uh, the lot complies fully with the A&R requirements. Um, and again, it's just, I think, a formality. Does any other board member have any comment? I'd like to make a motion to approve, Mark. Motion to endorse the a and plan for 73 Holland Road. I'll second that. Correct. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Shell? Aye. And myself, vote aye. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Uh, so that's all set. And next on the agenda, we'll be meet with Mr. Jamie Bissonnette regarding Colt. Colpat Drive subdivision. Well, again, good evening, Jamie Bissonnette for the record. Uh, Mr. Riley is also here tonight. Uh, he's the owner of the property. Um, I'm going to pull the plan up at, so we can discuss, discuss it. This was a subdivision that's been previously approved by the planning board. Um, and the, um, the seven years on the existing subdivision is approval is coming and going. Um, and so the, the owner of the property, Mr. Riley, has been in front of the planning board last year. And um, at that time, he, this was pre-COVID, he was, he was advised to bring the plan in, renewed with new stamps, and, um, and they would, they would reapprove the plan. Um, but in, in that time period, Azor has, um, has closed. Um, and so he, he finally, he was able to track us down because we, uh, we did, uh, we do employ John Pink at, at our survey office, and um, we were able to find some of the files here. And so I'm going to pull up the plan and show it to the board. And we'd like just to get um, an unofficial um, nod or direction in which way the board would like for us to move forward with this, if possible, um, so that we make sure we're doing the right thing. So this this was the definitive subdivision plan. Um, is, is I've been made aware that that was uh, that was approved. A am I correct with that, Mr. Riley? Mr. Riley? Oh, John, we can't hear you. No sound, yeah. No sound. Okay. Um, well, he, 
Mr. Riley had dropped this plan off to my office, and um, and I believe this is one of the pages in the definitive set that was done by Azor and approved by the planning board. Um, and so, as you can see, it's a wavered subdivision um, off of Hill Street. I believe that this is uh, this project is a little bit north of Maya Lane, um, and uh, it obviously Hill Street goes up to Montgomery Street and I believe Pickens Street is to the south as oriented on this plan. Um, so he would be looking to have uh, the subdivision plan essentially re-endorsed um, as it has been in the past. If not, um, he, he would most likely look at the option of trying to construct this now, but he'd rather hold off on the construction and move, move forward with just a re-endorsement, um, you know, to, to make sure that he keeps what he has uh, going forward. Um, I believe we had a brief conversation about this. Is lot 1B his house? Yes, 1B is his house. And was his intent for when he retires to do this or is it for lots for his kids or something? I forget. It yeah, John, John had referenced to me that these were for his children. John, can you shake your head if that is correct? That's correct, yes. Oh, we can hear you now. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, so Mr. Riley, what's your plan now? What's your long-term plan? Um, well, I'm actually retired now, so um, I can focus on this and start the process, but I realized, I think I went last September, October, knowing that, you know, knowing that was, the time frame was coming up, so... Um, I just need another period of time to get it going basically so and it's expiring before you have the time right so i i can't speak for the whole board um and obviously we can vote on it but i would say overall yeah we would approve um but where we're probably a, a quite a different board than seven years ago when this was done um, would your intent for this to be a private way as well? Correct. Um, so the only thing that I might say is that we would, some of the similar conditions that we did tonight on that other subdivision, we might want to impose that, you know, to keep that from being a town road and that those, those lots be responsible for the, the drainage of it. So if you reapplied, we just want to condition it to protect the town as well, but we, we would probably have no problem with you putting that roadway in. Okay, thank Again, you very much. I don't wanna speak for the whole board. I mean, we can ask, but I don't wanna make an official vote on it, but what's your feeling, Peter? Um, could could Jamie go to page one of this? Uh, where's the, um, is, is there any description of, of a turnaround or a T or what's at it, the end? It looks, Peter, the, both of these sheets are the same. Um, it, page one and two are both identical. Uh, I, it appears that my my office manager scanned in the same plan twice, um, and this was the only plan that I believe I was given. We're gonna try to we're gonna try to find the rest of them. I'm sure. I would guess the Registry of Deeds probably has some. Um, I know that Azor's paper files are gone, um, so I might even have to um, ask Kathy to try to dig this out of the um, the files in the basement uh, at some point. But it appears that they attempted to do a hammerhead in this Y-like configuration down here. Um, I spoke with Mr. Riley about that and, and let him know that there have been a couple of changes since this came into effect. Um, one would be the 20 foot width for the fire, um, for the fire chief. And then two would be making sure that we can turn the ladder truck around like we just did on, um, on right. Bella Way. Um, besides that, I, you know, I'd want to look at the rest of the plans, but I don't see anything major here. This, this looks like a, a really a good layout. And I, I actually believe I'm in a butter to this property um, as well. And, and, you know, I, 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 perf I welcome it. Um, and could I ask one other question, Jamie? Um, this is the first we've seen of this. Mm -hmm. So I just want to, those lots as drawn on that plan from seven years ago conform with today's front yard circle and all those things that they appear to but again that will be part of my due diligence and going forward on okay. this um you know we'll, we'll have to make sure the property lines that 
that it conforms with all the zoning because the zoning you're right has changed and the uh, the seven year lock on the plans is more of a zoning lock than anything um so it's more of a zoning freeze in case things change so that zoning freeze i believe is gone but from looking at this plan it looks like that he would be fine and if not it would be a minor change right in this vicinity here cul-de-sac wise to get him in compliance okay. uh, I, I don't think that there's going to be any major changes here all right so I, I would say and again not speaking for the entire board but as long as you came back with a plan that did conform with mm -hmm. current zoning and the requirements needed to keep it a private way and again satisfy the fire chief and board of health and those needs, I, I have no problem with this plan. Excellent, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, and next on the agenda, we have meet with Jamie Bissonette regarding GIS system. All right. Um, all right, so I, I had had a conversation with Barbara. Um, well, actually, I don't, I don't see on anymore. Um, but Barbara and I had a discussion regarding GIS and, um, and the ability for GIS to really take, um, you know, take the town in a, in a nice positive step forward for organization and planning. Um, a lot of towns have a nice GIS system. In fact, uh, the town of Lakeville now with on the assessors page has a GIS reference. So what I wanted to talk about was, um, but what I wanted to kind of go over was with GIS, um, in, in our case, I believe the GIS is based on mass grid coordinate system. Oh, sorry, Mark. Just, Kathy, could you just make a note that it looks like Barbara dropped out of the meeting, maybe her cell phone uh, lost service or something, so that after the informal meeting with, uh, Jamie about Colpat Drive, Barbara may have not been in the meeting. Uh, just so if we take any more votes, it may be only a three member vote unless she comes back in. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Jamie. Nope. No. Um, and so what I wanted to do is just real briefly um, kind of show um, on our CAD, but which is also um, the, the software with the, um, with the technology on mass grid is, is amazing and what you can do with it. Um, for example, our GIS equip, our, our GPS equipment that we use um, is programmed to locate things on mass grid and NAVD 88. And NAVD 88 is the datum that's used for flood um, on FEMA's mapping. Um, and so in, with our GPS, I can go out to a site, I can locate a point, and um, within almost immeasurable distances, I can have an elevation and a horizontal location. And we can come back and drop that onto a plan set that will fall right in line with the GPS um, data system that the assessors are currently using now. And so, for example, the city of Taunton requires two GPS points on a property um, so that in the future they can reference or even possibly now they can reference where things are in location horizontally um, in their city. Uh, and that, that would, it might not be something we can implement now, but it would be a great thing going forward for not only things like wells, um, but also catch basins for DPW, um, areas of importance or, um, it, you know, possibly um, any, any site features that, you know, any board in town feels is worth noting can be picked up and put on the system with, with minimal uh, effort. Um, so what I'd like to do is share share my uh, screen with you for a minute because I have a quick little uh, CAD presentation that I can show if if the chair is uh, okay with that. Absolutely. All right. All right. So as you can see, this is this is my screen. Um, this is AutoCAD that we're using right now, and it's a program called Civil 3D, but it's it's made by Autodesk. Um, and what this is, is this is essentially the state's, uh, the state's version of our tax mapping all put out. And, and these red lines uh, break up the towns. And so we have all the abutting towns. In fact, this drawing right here has the entire state's um, assessor mapping put into a CAD format. And what's nice about this is, for example, 
Um, well, let's let's pick let's pick this piece right here. You can click on a parcel, and over on the screen, it will tell it, it'll tell you exactly what this is, which is 28 Precinct Street. Tells me the map block um, and a lot of information about it. But what it does is it, it also has fixed coordinates on mass grid again, which is very important. And what it does is it allows you to overlay and turn on layers, uh, but it also allows, uh, let's say the DPW was to, was to obtain a GPS um, unit, or um, like you had said earlier, you're talking about hiring a consultant. Um, these consultants, if they need to go out and locate catch basins as part of going forward with, uh, with the, maybe the role of having a planner or something along those lines, um, having things on mass grid in a system will benefit them in a large, large way. And so as you can see on the screen, um, the, the ability to um, input photos and the likes um, with relative ease is It, it, it'll it, the the stuff the information that you pull in falls right in place because it's all referencing the same the same datum the same the same grid. Um, so for example, if we want to take these are zone twos, zone ones, IWPAs, we we can take and bring in any of these any of these this information, and we can drop it right in because it's all on the same coordinate system, and that's how your system would also work with a matter of pressing buttons on the screen. It would be much simpler than what I'm doing, but you can see um, you can see how it would work being on the same datum. So we would be able to turn on and find where the flood mapping is around the ponds. We could, um, we could turn on the layers of where DEP has wetlands or specific soils or, uh, or protective, uh, protective areas that, that the, um, you know, that the DEP is trying to protect, whether it's solid waste, uh, public water supply wells, wetlands, tributaries, and the like. Um, and so basically what I wanted to talk about, or what Barbara and I talked about was how much value this could bring into the, to the town in the long term. Um, you know, for record keeping and for planning, uh, this would be big for a planner coming into town to have uh, the ability to have a nice GIS system in place. And I would recommend if you get a get a chance, take a look at the town of Stoughton's, the town of Attleboro's, um, you know, GIS systems. They, they're fantastic. Some of them are so far advanced that you can click on it and see the deeds, um, see any plans that have been recorded, whether they're board of health, um, building permit, building permit plans. They're very informative, and um, they, you know, and, and, and it's nice for a board like yourself to be able to have that resource. So. Again, that was pretty much what I wanted to show tonight. I think it was what I was asked to show. And um, I, I'll try to answer any questions if you have any, but please understand GIS wise, there are people that know a lot more than I. I mean, they offer bachelor's and I believe master's degrees in GIS now. So with that presentation um, and maybe playing off your discussion with Barbara, I believe you said, Mm -hmm. Is that something you're proposing that the town offices would have that access to? What I what I think what what I think I'm getting at is that um, that we we uh, the discussion has been started now, and and um, I've kind of pointed uh, the board members in in a couple of useful directions to websites that have these resources. I think it's important that the board look at those sites and determine if those resources are valuable to the board. And I think you're going to find that they are. I think they're, they'd be very valuable to a board of health, uh, to a conservation commission, um, because they can have uh, data of abutting wells, um, any major resource areas, and, and other plans that have been done so that you're not having to try to remember what was approved 30 years ago. You, you can click on a link and see it um, relatively easy. Um, I, I think it's a great way to keep track of things and have things organized. But again, it's going to be something that you've got to feel out, look into, and see what's applicable and how it can improve, you know, the planning board and the town overall. Yep. So. 
Excellent. Well, I, we appreciate the, the presentation and the information about that. Yeah, no, no, my pleasure. And again, um, you know, I just, I, I know it's a fantastic thing and Barbara and I talked about it and, and um, I wanted to just bring it to everybody's attention because there are people that don't know it exists and how integrated it is. The state actually has an entire website set up for GIS where we can download amazing information um, for free. Including including aerial photos and everything else that that work into um, that can work into that system and so long term planning I think it's a it could be a fabulous thing for the town. So is the whole thing free or just well? It, it, the, there are data layers that are free that the that the state has on on their website um, that we can grab and anybody can. Uh, but the system itself. Um, I, I don't know how integrated the existing GIS system the town has and the capability of it, and I won't pretend to know. Um, what I, if if it does pique interest of the board members, recommend maybe reaching out to some of these towns that have that. A lot of them have GIS coordinators, or they have outside consulting departments that do that um, for them, and and figuring out what they use for software, what kind of investment it is, if any. Um, you know, and, and looking at it that way, because um, because I, I think it would, it would be, a, it, it, I've said it over and over, I think it'd be a nice benefit for the town. I have hey used guys, the one. The sorry. Oh. One at a time. Go ahead, sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was all excited because I finally got back in. I was called in on the other line listening and I couldn't, you guys couldn't hear me talking. I oh. believe the town of Lakeville has already made some investment in this regard. Um, we can double check that. Maybe I'm mistaken, but that's the reason I asked Jamie about this to begin with, was I believe that we are already uh, moving down this path. So I'll leave it there. Yep. Yeah, it, and it, it has a lot of a lot of amazing capabilities, um, really does. So um, it, it's something that the board members should look at and possibly, you know, possibly look at expanding for your use or taking advantage of its um, of it of its uh pros you know of, of its options yep i'm definitely interested because i have used the one on the assessor's uh page and yep. i'd be curious to compare to stoughton and attleboro like you said and see if you know what's the difference and oh yeah when you turn much... on some of the some of the towns and, and cities that have uh, more developed gis systems you'll be able to turn on catch basin layers um hydrants um street street signs um st storm storm drains sewer drains uh, you name it um and you can click on some of them and they'll tell you how deep they are what size the pipes are um culverts pretty much everything they really get into it um and i'm not saying we need to be there but um we we should we should start because most towns have and cities uh, i can't think of a city that hasn't Well, we should definitely push for that. All right. Well, again, that was it. I hope I I hope I uh, answered any of the stuff we talked about, Barbara. Thank you very much, Jamie. Anytime. All right, All right. everybody. Have a great night. Thanks, Thanks Jamie. Very helpful. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, so next on the agenda, we have to review some zoning board of appeals petitions. Uh, First one is Bajinga 33 Shore Drive. Uh, did, has anybody had a chance to look through these? Do you have any comment? How about you, Michelle? Did you get a chance to look through any of these? I did, I looked at them. Um, I wasn't sure if this was something that we typically remain silent on because it's um, BOA. Um, I was curious to know myself, you know, if the if there have been variances of this type allowed in the past. Um, I thought they, you know, the first one, the shed was already built, and he's looking for a variance now. And then Betty's neck, um, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it fits a buildable size lot. Um, um, I was. But they were trying to say that because there was a previous structure, but the previous structure is back in the 1980s, so it was a while ago. Um, 
so I mean, I found them all kind of interesting. Um, how do you typically proceed with these? Um, well, I, you, you bring up a good point to the Betty's neck one. Because it is an undersized lot and there are processes to uh, tear down a building and put up a new building. But if it's, that makes it pre-existing, non-conforming and you're grandfathered to receive a variance if you can be not more, you would be less conforming. But when there's no building and it was just a historical footnote, I don't know that that's a, a legitimate gripe to say we should we should be grandfathered. Uh, so the Bajinga one for 33 Shore Drive, uh, I have no comment. Yeah, um, I agree, Mark. No comment from from me as well. Betty's next one. I mean, I don't necessarily think that. Uh, I mean, they're basically taking an undersized lot and trying to make it a buildable lot. I, that would be like somebody coming to us with an A and R lot that's only twenty thousand square feet. The uh, the ZBA will uh, will handle it as they always do. So I I, I don't have ne necessarily anything for that one either. You know. I'd like to ask you a procedural question. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. My question is, um, in the past, um, planning board has seemed to have not really commented much on these papers that come through for CBA. Um, do you have any feedback on why it was, or has, am I mistaken? Has it been, it just seems to be my recollection in the past three years, but you've certainly been on the board much longer than I. Uh, yeah, Barbara, I, I think we just kind of felt as though the, the ZBA is set up really to handle this and um, they do an excellent job at uh, listening to uh, like the, because um, all we get is is the most vaguest drawings. Some of them are much worse than hand-drawn and um, so like you really can't make a judgment. So a lot of times we just uh, kind of read through it. The, the, we have made a few comments over the years. Not a lot, though. You're right. And um, on on occasion, we do chime in and we just say, "Hey, um, I, I, a few in particular were uh, ones that showed um, some um, some roads that were on some maps but weren't on others." And uh, we we asked for them to clarify, like their driveways, which weren't clarified at all, but stuff like that, we would um, make a quick note on. And other other times, we most of the time we just like pass it on and, and let them handle it. So Kathy, are we supposed to take a, a, a vote on each of these? Yeah. Okay. So on 33 Shore Drive, I make a motion to have no comment to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I second that. All in favor, Peter? Aye. Barbara? Aye. Michelle? And myself, aye. Um, I really, I'm gonna jump to 32 Fuller Shores. I make a motion to not send any comment to the Zoning Board of Appeals regarding 32 Fuller Shores. All right, motion in a second. All in favor? Peter? Aye. Aye. Barbara? Aye. Uh, Michelle? You have to unmute to say aye. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize I was. Aye. I saw your mouth moving, so I figured it was aye. <laughs> and myself, aye. Uh, motion carries unanimously, no comment. Um, I really would not recommend approval. I don't know. I guess 
I guess no comments. It's 1.1 acres. There's probably plenty of plenty of frontage. We'll let them and the Board of Health fight it out. So uh, I motion to make no comment on I Afraidy Johnson, Betty's Neck Road, map six, block four, lot 25. I'll second that, Mark. Our motion and a second. All in favor, Barbara. Aye. Peter. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Myself, aye. Motion carries unanimously. We make no comment. Um, so the next on the agenda is the July 23rd and the January 23rd minutes of meeting. Um, I had a comment about the January one. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yes. Yep. All right, I'm gonna make a motion to approve the July 23rd, 2020 planning board minutes of meeting. I'll second that. All in favor, Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. And myself, aye. Present motion carries unanimously to approve the July 23rd minutes of meeting. Uh, forgive me, I just need to look really quick. I had a, a note. Here we go. Uh, this one's for Kathy. On fourth page, it's under the uh, discuss the bylaw creation for design standards for business owned new construction. In I believe it's the second paragraph, <clears throat> depending how my printer printed this from how it was a Word document. Um, Mr. Knox said the only issue is the current bylaws takes 50% lot coverage before the density bonus is triggered, blah, blah. The next sentence, he would like their import from their experience. Could that be input? I believe so, yeah. Okay. I believe that's the only thing that I had was just to change that. Uh, so I make a motion to approve the January 23rd minutes with the changes as noted. So moved. All Would right. you make the motion? I'll second it. Sorry. Yes. Motion and a second. Barbara? Aye. Peter? Aye. Michelle? I think I have to abstain because it was before me, I think. Yes. So I abstain. And I approve. So motion carries with a majority, with one abstention. Um, so the next thing we have on the agenda is the master plan implementation. So who wants to go? Tell me you're going to start implementing. <laughs> this is something we wanted to keep on the agenda so it doesn't not get done. Has anybody had any time to? I got to be honest, Mark. I haven't had time. I, I, I'm, I'm straight out. I'm going to, I plan on making time as soon as I can. Okay. Um, well, that's well just, just how it, uh, how it's been. So Michelle, go ahead. Okay. So the first <laughs> referring to my spreadsheet that I came up with here, the first item for 2020 is actually um, what we discussed already with uh, the BOS about um, hiring a town planner. So I did look into um, some local towns just to see what they do. Um, Wareham and Rochester share a town planner. They each pay a portion of the salary and um, then they each have that planner in-house for a set number of days during the week. Um, the town of Middleborough, their current planner, according to her, her Indeed profile, she was the town planner and conservation agent for 10 years in Rehoboth, which I thought that was kind of interesting because if you look for um, year 2022, 
one of uh, the strategies is to hire a full-time conservation agent to help identify and protect important areas in Lakeville. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I thought if we could afford a full-time person, it might be helpful if it's somebody who's familiar in both to maybe get check both of those items off. Um, I know what we discussed with the Board of Selectmen and what we've kind of put in place is you want to kind of come up with a list of things that we need from a planner. I think that's great, great first step. And, um, and then also, um, I think it was, you know, checking out all the, diff the consulting firms and what they have to offer it as well. So, I mean, I think at least we're kind of working at that first goal for 2020. Yeah, and actually, so to, to actually play off of that and Kathy, <clears throat> we've already asked to have on the August 27th uh, meeting, the, the description and needs or requirements of whether it be an, a consulting engineer or a planner. Um, so why don't we focus on one thing at a time for the master plan and that'll be our focus for the next meeting as part of the master plan slash planner discussion would be we need to come up with some sort of a job description that uh what and again that's whether we hire a consultant in the the meantime or to have a planner do those duties i think we want to look at how a project gets approved look through the the bylaws and regulations for you know it's those some of the like a spreadsheet that michelle's done or some of the punch list checklist things that i've done and kathy's done some that those are the things that we want a planner to be looking at or that consultant to look at. Um, everybody, maybe if you have some time, delve into that 43D uh, process to see, and again, like conditioning uh, a site plan review. And if it abuts residential land and its commercial development we have certain rights to condition for privacy buffers and noise buffers. And those are the things that we would want this individual looking at. Um, and again, it, that, that's where it kind of veers to from uh, whether it's a planner or a, a, a consulting engineer. Um, usually a consulting engineer firm would have more resources and they'd be doing traffic studies and things like that but that would be when a planner would be reviewing that traffic study for us. But, so I think, you know, to, to continue with the planner or consulting engineer plan, uh, I'd like everybody to try to come to the next meeting for that portion of the discussion of let's combine it as master plan and planner consulting. Um, of their thoughts and needs that we think the position needs to have. I know Barbara has said that uh, we need to know the capabilities and an engineer could tell us how much more they could do. She's probably right, but we need to start somewhere. And I think look, look within our regulations to come up with what we want some of that description to be. And, and Mark and also- Mark, can I make a, a suggestion? Sure. Oh, you go ahead, Michelle. Oh, I was just going to say that I know the last time we had kind of discussed that 43D was only um, apl applicable to the hospital site, um, but the master plan is actually looking for us to um, implement, implement that for also the former Dewey's bowling alley site as well. That's goal for 2026. So just to throw that out there, because I know we had talked about it and, you know, that was the only location currently but master plan is looking for us to implement 43D again in the future, so. I, I did see that in there. I don't disagree with that being part of the master plan. Um, I just think that, that we, we shouldn't favor that property because the current owners don't wanna sell it. That's been on the market on and off for 20 years. I put an offer on it 18 years ago, oh. it was reasonable. And they just, they, I don't think they can get their stuff together. So I don't think that we should give them an advantage. I, I'm a little apprehensive about 
making that a 43D expedited permit thing just because they've sat on it until it's become that dilapidated that we feel like we need to do something for them? Well, I think it's more like the town is sick of looking at it and would like to see something good and useful go in that location. I mean. Yeah, I just, I just don't want to see a, a, an unfair advantage because they, they've been a crappy owner. You know, let's talk about that more. We, we have six more years before we have to. <laughs> hey Mark, so one of the comments, am I on mute still? Okay, I'm not on mute, okay. Mark, one of my comments is um, with, with respect to implementation. So this is gonna be a multi-year project and I love the booklet that we have and I love the spreadsheet, but my suggestion is, and maybe somebody has something that's better, but like on our weekly agenda, Perhaps what we can do is have a section related to master plan, not weekly agenda or bi-weekly agenda. It says, you know, master plan. And then I'd love to see like what action items we were responsible for. Like, so today you're giving us action items and we need to remember to get those done for us before the next meeting, right? Yeah. So if we had them on the agenda, those action items in a separate section under just master plan implementation or something, just to keep us all on the same page. Again, maybe not the best suggestion, I'm just trying to think of a way to kind of keep it in front of us and keep it fresh um, from week to good. week. That's a good suggestion, Barbara. I, I can speak for myself in saying I need that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. direction is a good thing. Michelle did a spreadsheet that kind of yep. does some of that. Did you get to see that, Kathy? I did, yep. Do you think that's something you could work off to keep us all honest? And so when it's, let's just say we complete an item or, you know, or we get to a point where there's no other action required for maybe this, this planner thing uh, to then refer to that spreadsheet to then bring the next item to the top of the pile. Just like I say, to keep master plan, not so much at the meeting, but the, the, the week before when we get the agenda that it's in there for that action item from that spreadsheet to be like, let's start talking about it, even if it's a year or two or six years in advance. Well, I have like an action item for my own. Like I kind of look at a gift to you, but then the, what I have to do. So if you want to tell me at the meeting what you want people to be responsible for, I can add that onto mine and then put it onto. Okay. You know, put that out to you. How about Michelle, you update us of the next item on your spreadsheet as we filter through some of these to keep us posting them on the agenda. So then Kathy will keep them at the top of the list for us. I have no problem with that. What, um, to avoid any open meeting law issue, should I just email Kathy? Do you want, should I just send it out as information to the group? What's the best? Well, I think like tonight, we, we had the, the planner thing, everything kind of like converged that we were doing that. And it was actually one of the first items to do in the master plan. So at the next meeting, if we get through that planner thing, just be ready with the next one to say, hey, at the following meeting, this is what's next on the master plan Im implementation. So everybody start thinking about it. And Kathy can, at that point, make a note to put it on the next meeting's agenda. And we'll already be working on it. Okay. So that'll keep us from any open meeting law, which I don't think we're, we're not voting on it, so to speak, as much as just discussing. Okay. Uh, so even if, <clears throat> like tonight in, in new business, I want to just bring something up. We're not going to vote on it. I just want to talk about it. But if we did have to vote on it in the next meeting, we'd want to kind of put it on the agenda to ratify that vote. Is that not accurate, Kathy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So with the master plan implementation, you had action required by the board, which typically means there's a vote. Do we need to actually vote on anything tonight, Kathy, or are we just gonna? No, that was just, just in case that you did. <clears throat> okay. So under new business, I just wanted to talk about, <clears throat> it's, the, uh, it's the zoning portion of our bylaws that the, the hospital property will be permitted under, and it's the Development Opportunities District. And I don't know if anybody's read that. I think Michelle has. Um, it's scary as hell. 
basically, if you have a 25 acre parcel anywhere in town, the fa following uses shall be permitted by special permit in the development opportunities district. Manufacturing, industrial, processing, fabrication, high tech, warehouse, <clears throat> municipal, transportation terminal, hotel motel, uh, research development office building, medical center, trade or professional school, retail, theater, restaurant. <clears throat> and I just think there's only like three numbered roads in Lakeville that I would say could handle the traffic of, let's just say a hotel. But there's a lot of 25 acre parcels that are off the beaten path. It, and, and Mark, with some of those projects, the fact that they have houses on them uh, or can be combined, that doesn't matter when it comes to that kind of money. You know what I mean? It doesn't. It, it's not It's not to say, oh, you can't, you can't put those five lots together because they have houses on them. When some of those projects are so expensive, they'll say, that's not a problem, you know? Yep. And, well, and, and that's not even... It doesn't have to stay 25 acres. It can start 25 acres and then they can develop it into pieces as well. So there's a lot of freedom with this, but like I say, it's just, it scares the heck out of me to say that a, a distribution center can go anywhere there's a 25 acre parcel. Yeah, so it sounds like we need a bylaw revision and that has to go to town meeting, right? Well, so... I emailed Nate about this. I had a little discussion with Michelle about it. And it sounds like our best opportunity is there is some verbiage in here that says we can um, do something with our rules and regulations to try to control some of that development. But I also want to talk to town council just to see if <clears throat> not trying to spot zone because we, we have zoning districts, but if we can, again, rewrite the bylaw to say that it has to be within so many, it, it, I, my thoughts are, it has to have frontage on a numbered route. Or, you know, we could name those roads. It's no different than the, the, the marijuana uh, overlay that we did to control that to Kenneth Welch Drive and Millennium Circle. And you name out the specific addresses that are eligible, uh, but to try and keep them on Route 18, Route 105, and you know maybe you say within a half mile of Route 140 at an exit ramp, but I don't want to see it. Just you know, you you have to go down three scenic roads to get the distrib distribution center to the highway. So I think that's something that because of the hospital property and reading through that, I think that's something that we should make an effort by the next town meeting is to either update our rules and regs or to change this bylaw a little bit to better protect the town. I would like everybody, if they have a chance, it's only about seven or eight pages long, um, print it out and take a read of it. Um, so maybe Kathy, at our next meeting, we could also have a development opportunities district discussion. Now, would that be something we'd try to prepare for this upcoming fall town meeting? I don't think we can get on the, the agenda at this point. Is it too late to, to get on the fall town meeting, Kathy? Uh, I don't know when that is, so. Well, I don't wanna say no, that you know maybe we could, but we got to get the work done first anyway. So Mark, it seems like, uh, it seems like when we were adding zoning changes in the past few years for the fall town meeting, that they were pretty far along by this point in August. Do you know what I mean? The, um, you know what I mean? They were, they were getting reviewed by the legal, um, services already. I, I think that we'd be looking at next spring, April or May, whenever the, that town meeting is, and we'd have, would have our work cut out for us to get it done by then. <clears throat> so 
you know, we, that's something we need it done by January to get on the Springtown meeting. Mark, if you if we have a minute, uh, I have a, something for a new business as well. Yeah, um, go ahead. Just a, just a just a a thought that everybody could think of. Uh, so uh, a lot of um, towns websites have um, have a uh, like a uh, a generic email box for the different boards, uh, with, uh, especially like uh, even building departments. Especially uh, I've used those, especially in the past four months, um, and they're very helpful. I was curious if the other board members would think that this would be helpful to like, say, have a generic mailbox to the planning board. You could name it, like say, like ask the planning board. Um, and uh, we could review the emails that came in, you know, um, and I think this would help too with, I know that we all, we, we do get a lot of feedback about transparency and about um, information getting out to people as best as we do. But um, I know some people feel as though they're still not getting enough or timely so barbara what do you think she there oh it looks like she's off oh well, what do you think michelle um i know that uh you can't once the emails are sent uh you know they can't be just like um forwarded haphazardly but if there was a process in place where people would click and write an email um we could you know, we could uh, compile them and go through them, you know? Well, I think the BOS has the option when you click on their name, you can do the fill form and it goes directly to that member. Um, it sounds like a good idea, actually. I mean, I'm all for feedback and, you know, getting town involvement. Bear in mind, some of the emails are going to be, uh, need to be filtered uh, pretty heavily. <laughs> yeah, probably. But I, that goes with everything, you know? What do you think, Mark? I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I think we've been doing a pretty good job at transparency. Oh, I, I, I agree. I, um, I, I, we're doing as best as of a job we can do, considering we're all in five different buildings, you know, um, in, and Kathy's in the town hall and everybody's everywhere. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Um, I just, uh, if there was, you know, one like a uh, recurring um, comment I keep hearing uh, from either, um, I don't follow social media at all, but my wife keeps me, um, you know, um, entertained is, is, you know, just they keep pounding out transparency and information. So it's just a thought moving forward. Uh, I, I, I agree with the information. I, I think stuff's so, been posted as best as we can, but. Yeah, well, I think given, from my personal experience, people don't look very hard for the information, and a lot of them. That's true. Uh, actually, comically, take it <laughs> off social media. Yeah. Um, you know, it, people will float things out there about like my project. Yeah. And I, I don't. I'm not on social media, so I can't. Stop it. I don't really care because I think most of that's, again, it's the people that they could go to the town website, they could look stuff up and they could actually watch a meeting or watch the meeting afterwards on like Cam TV to, to find out the real information. Right. But they wait and they hear somebody's going to say, oh, I think it's going to be an IHOP or a Sonic and they go crazy. Correct. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I just think. Wait, what's going to be a Sonic? Tell us. <laughs> I don't know. Anything. Your house. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. We All right. To... Well, I just threw it out there because I have used that feature on on uh, in a few other towns, and um, you know, uh, let's say uh, 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 the building department in you know Seekonk, especially during the pandemic, I'll send them an email. Hey, what do I do with this paper permit? you know and they're like oh do this this and this done and uh you know instead of trying to reach somebody by phone almost impossible um if we had a if we had a board email uh i know that it would get um a lot of uh clicks but maybe after the dust settles it would be a um it would be a pretty um useful tool to get people um people's feedback you know 
So I guess I, I don't mind people getting the feedback or people giving some input, but the, give you an example. Uh, tonight's hearing that was continued for a bell away. How many people came to that with the mindset that's going to be low income housing because that's what that guy does. They're going to clear cut all the trees to, and that was never the intent. It was never, and who's going to filter and answer all these emails? I know, Kathy. You know, because, well, you know, <laughs> you just kidding, brought, Kathy. You brought up a good point that, uh, you know, you will find out what to do about a, a plumbing permit or a building permit somewhere. And then somebody paid within the town hall that you were inquiring to answer you. You're correct. Yep. And none of us are paid. None of us have the probably that I'm, I have two jobs. I, <laughs> I, I have all I can right. do to answer the current town emails that I get regarding this, which I don't mind, but I certainly don't want to, I don't want to be responsible for. And I don't think, Kathy, do you want to, uh, almost like a social media email coming into your no yeah well i mean i have a, a, an email up there and i don't really get a lot of questions oh okay so there is a general What's planning board? there is a general planning board email address no it's my email as the staff contact yeah fair enough so all right all right, very good. I guess if anything was ever sent to you, you'd pass it on if, if it was pertinent, I guess. Anyways? I mean, usually it's just different questions about developments, that type of thing. It's it's never really been from a resident, like what's going on over there. So Ed, one other thing I just wanted to bring up that um, Kathy, uh, in the tonight's packet, um, from the town administrator regarding Bella Way, which I know that's been passed, but the, the Board of Selectmen said they didn't have enough time to review it back then. And it's been continued, I think twice since that letter was drafted. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that they had a chance to look at it in the past month. They didn't say anything tonight, but do they realize we only have 45 days to act on something? and? Well, yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I actually looked it up and from what I found, unless that was changed um, for a pre preliminary plan, you have 90 days to act. It's not a preliminary plan. They, they submitted. Oh, no, no, no. If it, uh, for pre preliminary, it's 90. If there is no preliminary, it's 135. Is that with current COVID stuff or is that in the subdivision control handbook? Well, with COVID right now, there is no well, I, st I still think you have to schedule the public hearing within a certain point, even though you okay. have that much time to act. Hold this up. Is this what you have? Kind of like uh, a little trick. So this is what Zinc gave me. And within 45 days, the Board of Health has to act but the planning board has, like I said, those two dates yeah. in order to take action. So it's 135 days from the beginning of when you receive it. Now I know they used to, like the engineers used to come and distribute it to the boards and they only had 10 days. And I think I gave them two weeks, but I was gonna ask you where it is such a large time frame do you want to give boards a month to review it before it's um, opened up as a public hearing? I'll, I'll have to look at the regulation and the subdivision control handbook again, uh, but I, I don't think that we can just sit on it for 135 days without No, action. but at least like if they had at least two to three weeks to look at it and then, so distribute that first and then schedule the hearing like right before, kind of more like a ZBA, which is what I usually do. Because whereas they only have the one meeting. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I feel like the plan, as soon as we receive it in, and we acknowledge that we've received a subdivision, a definitive subdivision plan or, or an A&R, 
the clock's ticking and I think that they should be distributed immediately to every board other than us. You know, the Board of Health, the Board of Selectmen, the Highway Department, the police, the fire, they all should get it immediately. As soon as it gets entered in, they get their copies because I think that's part of the, the application regulation is immediately circulate that. So I wouldn't hold it for a minute to, to let those boards so I get- I can hold it before I posted it for a public hearing. <clears throat> like, I think that one, there was a little bit of delay because it kind of came in the middle of COVID. I wasn't here all the time. It was crazy with catch up, but like going forward, do you want to give the boards a little bit more time? I thought 10 days was like, I didn't think that was enough, but you know, do you want to go two or three weeks for them to be able to review that? Well, I think it would be reasonable to say, again, based on when a plan is submitted, if you, let's just say it's submitted on a Monday and the selectmen meet that night, they don't have time. And if their next meeting is two weeks, then that, and they're the, the whatever the longest duration of a board that, or department that's required to review a plan before we act on it, that's the maximum that we should be waiting to post it. So again, if it comes in on a Monday and the selectmen meet that night and they didn't get to look at it, they should be getting it that day. And the two weeks later is when they'll have time to comment for us to, at our following meeting, start to review the plan. And I know this, that depending on which day of the week, the month starts, sometimes their first and third or second and fourth is a, a week off from ours. But, so I would say two weeks just to let all of them respond, but not more than, and I'd, I'd definitely send them immediately. Don't hold them. Even if yeah, we well now things are more back to normal. So that's a lot easier. Uh, so what else have we got? I think that's it. I just had one thing. Um, there was no meeting scheduled for August. So I don't know if you want to have a motion, if you do want to have that second meeting. What was it? The, the 27th. Um, is there anything, there's n nothing else that has come in? No. Well, I guess I'm all right with motioning to forego the August 27th meeting, but I did say that we'd put a few things on the agenda and those are things that we just need to work on in-house. So as long as everybody continues to work on those, uh, and again, that's the, the planner or consultant description of what we're looking for. Uh, was there anything else we had on that one? Oh, that development opportunities district that everybody kind of work on that, then I'm fine with we forego until uh, you had it written down, right? September 10th. September 10th. September 10th. So yeah, I make a motion to forego the August 27th meeting because we have no uh, active hearings and our next scheduled meeting would be September 10th at seven o'clock. Second. All in favor? Uh, Peter. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Myself, aye. Motion carries with a majority. It looks like we lost Barbara again. Um, so I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn the planning board meeting and reopen the PAA meeting. To ratify second that, Mark. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Myself. So the planning board meeting comes to a close and we reopened the plan approval authority meeting. <clears throat> so we previously opened this meeting and we 
Kathy, can you tell me, did we officially reopen this meeting? Because I know we had that technical glitch with Lake oh. Camp. Yes. Well, you, I don't think you reopened it, but you motioned to recess it. I, I reopened Let's... it and recessed it instantly. Okay. So we're reopening this official, make a motion to reopen the plan approval authority meet, meeting. Can I get a second? Second that, Mark. All in favor, Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Myself, aye. The planning, plan approval authority meeting come to order. And I believe we motioned to waive the reading of the minor change. So can I get a motion to approve the waive the provision of section 11 of the plan approval authority and regulations with aspect to the proposed plan change? Uh, so moved. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Sorry. Approve slash, it's approve slash deny waive, the waive the provisions of section 11. All in favor of the approval of the waiving of the provision. All right. Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Mark, I. Sorry, it took me a minute to catch up with that, uh, with um, the motion there. I'm in. It's, I think it's drafted a little funny, but. Yes. So the records show that Mark Knox, Peter Conroy, and Michelle McEachran voted three votes to zero, and that Barbara is no longer present uh, at this time to waive. Section 11. Um, so can I get a motion to approve or deny the changes as shown on the plan entitled Grading Plan Lot D, Riverside Drive and Commercial Drive, Lakeville, Mass, scale one inch equals 30 feet dated 10-31-2018 revised through 63020, prepared by Zenith Consulting Engineers, LLC, 3 Main Street, Lakeville, Mass., subject to the condition one set forth below. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. And myself? Aye. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the applicant's request to allow the, afford the affordable units on lot D to be rented income eligible persons subject to condition two set forth below? Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor, Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Myself, aye. And can I get a motion to approve or deny the authorizing of Mark Knox chairman to execute this minor change of 40 R plan approval on behalf of the planning board as the plan authority. So moved. Second. All in favor? Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Myself, aye. And to read into the record, those conditions are number one, the applicant's engineer shall review the plan changes with HML associates to confirm the drainage system will have equal or less than impervious area than the previous approved design. And number two, the applicant shall obtain the approval of DHCD regarding the rented affordable units located in lot D, which we did receive. And the appeals, any legal appeal arising out of a plan approval decision by the plan approval authority under this section shall be governed 
by the applicable provisions of general law chapter 40 R. Any other request for enforcement or appeal arising under that section shall be governed by the applicable provisions of general law chapter 40 A. Uh, and I believe that ratifies the vote. Satisfied with that, Kathy? Uh, so I'm sorry, I did not get a chance to review the July 9th minutes. Did anybody get a chance to review them? Yeah, I, I read the mark. And approval authority? Yep. Would you motion to approve, Peter? I would. I would second that motion. So we have a second, a motion and a second to approve the July 9th, 2020 plan approval authority minutes of meeting. All in favor, Peter? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Myself, aye. Uh, so under new business, we have nothing. Under old business, we have received July 9th, 2020 email regarding residents at Namaskit River. Uh, I don't know that I have that in my packet. <clears throat> I have uh, just a letter from Nick Laney. Is there something that I need to do with this uh, email, Kathy? <laughs> I have... Uh, Lot D Riverside Drainage yep. Report review from HML Associates, and we have a bill that we could approve. Bill, oh, yep. So I have yep. Riverside Drive Drainage Review uh, from HML Associates for two hundred and fifty dollars. Can I get a motion to approve that bill? Uh, so moved. Uh, second, and all in favor? Peter. Aye. Bill. Aye. And myself, I, and I'm going to say that <clears throat> because we voted for me to be able to sign everything related to this, I can sign this one alone. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. So I, will, I will sign this and put it in the vestibule. You can come to the window now. I will. I'll wear my mask. Um, and I believe that's everything we have for the plan approval authority meeting. So I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Peter? Michelle? Aye. Myself? Aye. Um, so that concludes our business tonight. We've taken care of, seems like, four meetings. Um, I just wanted to, Mr. Lynch, you want to unmute yourself for a moment? You can uh, speak. Uh, like I said earlier, once again, I want to thank everybody for their support and confidence and I'm committed to doing whatever you need me to do for the benefit of the town. Thank you. I hope we didn't uh, bore you too much tonight. No, I think it was interesting to hear all the different issues and projects you have going. And like I said earlier, I don't know how you guys do all of this with the limited number of people you have. There seems to be a tremendous amount of work to uh, be done. And so, once again, I'm here and I'm not working. I'm retired. So whatever you need me to do, tell me. All right. So we're going to need you to get sworn in yep. and you get Kathy your email. Do you have that already, Kathy? I don't know. Okay. So you want to get the secretary here, your email address somehow so that she can get you some information for our next meeting once you get sworn in. And uh, I, again, I don't know how much you got out of tonight's discussion, but we talked about putting a few things on our next meeting agenda, which was the development opportunities district discussion, which is part of the town's bylaws. Right. So you should be able to find that on the town website. Okay. Uh, so read into that so you're familiar with the development opportunities district zoning bylaw. Uh, and at some point, maybe Kathy could get you a copy of the master plan. Okay. Because that's going to be something that's going to keep cropping up on the, the agendas to come. 
Yes. And if you'd like, if I if I could get his email address, I can send him all the documents that I was sent um, by Nate when I first came on. So then he can have all that too. You you all want my email address now? I'll just tell you what it is. Okay. It's J F L Y N six seven eight at gmail.com. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter. Sorry, could you st so you start over again? I'm sorry. It's J. Yep. F L Y N six seven eight at gmail.com. Got it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I'd like to apologize for the connection issues earlier. Uh, apparently, uh, Zoom had a connection uh, outage in on the East Coast. And that caused the problem. I was able to get us on live on on YouTube, on, on Lake Cam's YouTube channel, with just youtube.com slash Lake Cam. Uh, I don't remember exactly when that went live, but it was during, or well, right at the end of the selectman discussion. Okay. It was live, and I did post a cross post on Facebook, sending people over there to YouTube if they wanted to watch it live. So... We did the best we could with a bad situation. No, we appreciate it. I mean, it, we, we get it with the technical stuff. You guys are usually right on top of it. And I would have been yelling for help. So we, we appreciate you getting it back on. And Okay. And Mr. Lynch, could you stay on after everybody leaves? Because I have a question for you about the town's needs, in particular expertise in uh, uh, contracting and um, project management it's been a, a an issue in town um, accentuated recently uh, and brought to the fore recently and i'm curious of whether or not you could help out the selectmen in, in solving that problem sure glad to help yourself but at least recommending what kind of person is required to keep projects moving along in lakeville because we've had issues with funding them appropriating money for projects and then then not getting done because we don't have the expertise to move them along okay glad to okay super all right so that concludes business i appreciate everybody participating tonight and uh, very nice to meet you mr lynch i look forward to working with you thank you thank everybody you so much thank you good night good night, good night. take care